Big and impressive, powerful and fast, very comfortable and stuffed with electronics, but alas, not very reliable. No, we are not going to discuss Range Rover. We are talking about a much cheaper car that does not claim premium status, the 5th generation Ford Explorer. Hate number 5, Headlight. In the Russian automotive environment, the American light meme has long been established. Indeed, completely different standards have been adopted in the USA, and after the Europeans it seems that not electric bulbs, but torches or steering candles are inserted into the headlight reflectors of cars made there. And although Explorer was conceived as a global model that will be sold in many markets, this fully applies to him. Complaints about the weak headlights can be found, if not in every first, then certainly in every second review. No headlighting, light, of course, see grade maximum, headlight is really miserable. These are not the most stringent definitions. If you drive at night on unlit country roads, it can be dangerous. Even a dark street in Moscow is illuminated by a car very timidly. I also turn on the fog lights, but this only slightly refreshes the picture. A lot has already been written about light. If the operating conditions require its frequent use, the lamps definitely need to be changed. The lack of headlight washers only exacerbated this situation. In particular, these complaints relate to the low beam. In many versions of the model, both high and low beams are constantly on. Switching to low beam is ensured by covering part of the diffuser with a special curtain. Riding constantly with high beams in the 21st century is the height of cynicism. Well, at least plus one five liters per hundred to the expense. I am silent about the burnout of the headlights from the temperature. The owners criticized this design. Admittedly, Ford engineers were aware of these claims and tried to improve the situation. After restyling in the top trim levels, the high beam headlights received xenon lamps and the low beam headlights and fog lamps received LED sources. According to the owners, the dip beam of LED headlights practically does not depend on pollution and the light of LED fog lights significantly improves the illumination of the road in conditions of poor visibility. But even what happened during restyling suits far from everyone, and even among the owners of earlier versions, reworking the headlight has become a mass phenomenon, I had to redo everything. I put by Xenon, since the lens is already standing, well, so that everything is according to the law, it is untwisted for an autocorrector and a headlight washer. Everything was drawn to 32,000 rubles. All from Philips, Hella, and MTF. And I put LEDs in the fog lights, and now I have them connected like daytime running lights. And now I rejoice in the world as in the daytime. Both the signs and the roadside are in full view. Love number five, cabin and trunk dimensions. Why do people buy a big car? The prestige factor is also present here. But first of all, buyers want to get a voluminous interior and trunk. And in this respect, the Explorer fully meets all expectations. This is especially felt during long distance travels. We drove half of Russia and Europe. A family of two adults and three children feels like traveling in a camper van. A roomy box was fixed on the roof and the entire cabin behind the front seats turns into a double bed. You can sleep anywhere. According to the owners, with the skillful use of the cabin and trunk space, as well as the third row, everything fits, and the need to install an additional box on the roof may not arise. The trunk is also very positively evaluated, the volume of which can be increased to 2,285 liters, with the second row of seats folded down. Then 65 standard 5 cm thick foam boards fit into the car without any problems and there is still a margin for laying cargo under the roof or a hefty 2 meter wardrobe or 3 meter long skirting boards. But even in a 5 seat configuration, the luggage compartment is amazing. My whole of fishing schmirdiac plus 5 chairs, a table, a brazier, coal, clothes, food, and so on, and so on, and so forth enter with a whistle, while in the rearview mirror I do not see the top edge of the blockage. And God forbid you have a bottle of water rolled up to the far wall to get it, you first have to fully climb into the trunk with your feet. In general, there is enough space for everyone and everything both passengers and luggage. 
the owners also approve of the electric drive for opening the fifth door, which is activated by the magic pendle method, that is, by waving your foot under the bumper, you don't need to get dirty or shift all the packages of packages brought from the supermarket into one hand. Heat number four, second row seat. It would seem that with such internal volumes, second row passengers should be able to sit freely like in a limousine. If you want, cross your legs. If you want, just stretch out. But no. In many reviews, the authors note the lack of legroom for rear passengers. Thanks to the simplified exit system, my seat almost comes close to the back sofa, despite the fact that I am an ordinary man with a height of 180 centimeters. Somehow I left the house with a bag of garbage and couldn't put it on the floor in the back. I confess I'm not an athlete at all, 185 centimeters, 105 kilos, but I pushed the driver's seat back to the maximum. As a result, when you put a child seat and put a three-year-old child in it, it does not fit in my comfortable fit. Here I go, hunched over. Of course, all this causes indignation and bewilderment. How is it? The length of the car is more than 5 meters, it is longer than the Land Cruiser 200, and the child in the back of the car seat simply does not have legroom. Yes, there is more space in the RAV4. The owners are indignant, and this indignation can be understood. However, the lack of legroom claims to the second row of seats are not exhausted. There is not enough lateral support for the second row seats, and passengers on bins do not fall over only thanks to seat belts. There is no reclining armrest between the rear seats, and there is only a cup holder at the bottom, at the feet. This claim does not apply to all versions, but still. There is a life hack. When there is only one passenger in the back seat, you need to fill up half of the back and let the passenger put his elbow on the resulting table. Love number four, real third row. But the owners rate the third row of seats extremely highly, even those who, before buying the Explorer, considered the extra trunk space to be useless bows and baubles, a marketing ploy that was completely unnecessary in real life and only increased the price of the car. For many cars with three rows of seats in the cabin, such a judgment can indeed be called fair, but in the case of the Explorer, everything is completely wrong. The creators of the researcher, cutting the internal volume, really saved on the space of the second row, giving all the saved centimeters to the trunk and seats on the gallery. Even those who didn't use the third row seats too often, I drove my son's friends, teenagers 12 to 14 years old several times, the owners admit that seats are hidden in the explorer's trunk, on which adult men over 180 centimeters tall are accommodated even with more comfort than on second row. So in many reviews, commentators mention the regular use of the third row and that the opportunity to transport not one, but two families in the car was useful to them more than once, and that all passengers were simply delighted with the third row of seats. Hate number three, cross-country ability. In terms of assessing the cross-country ability of the V-generation Ford Explorer, all car owners are divided into three categories. The first are those who previously drove exclusively on road cars and whom the four-wheel drive led to indescribable delight. The second are those who based their expectations on appearance and who were severely disappointed. Still others are realists who clearly understand the limits of the model. The latter writes something like this, on the one hand, this is not a Cruzac, but on the other hand, I have never stuck on it while fishing. Maybe I didn't climb into crazy off-road wilds, but I tried to drive where I planned. This category of owners is well aware that, in fact, the fifth Explorer is not an SUV at all, but a city off-road vehicle, a huge and powerful passenger car, so it is strongly not recommended to drive it into liquid clay or a swamp. By definition, this car will not suit connoisseurs of lowerings and locks fans of real crooks cannot look at Explorer V. Very sad reviews from the second category. This car has no off-road qualities. Many times I got stuck in garages in winter, lay on my belly, and that's it. The 4x4 drive is not at all that smart, often even in shallow snow it slips stupidly. Indeed, many are confused by the presence of a terrain management system with exactly the same washer of the mode selector as in the Land Rover Freelander, which is not in vain considered the benchmark among crossovers, and they assumed that Ford should show the same agility. Once I also fell for this snag, 
getting stuck during the test in a place that I considered absolutely harmless based on the experience of operating the Freelander. But a significantly large mass, a long base, a low silencer, a very low hanging front bumper, and, apparently, slightly different algorithms for the all-wheel drive system change absolutely everything. Yes, four-wheel drive is very useful in slippery areas. It allows you to drive through a snowy yard or leave the country house. But it's better to limit yourself to this. By the way, about the skirt of the front bumper. At one time, when the car was still a novelty, I was amazed that when parking perpendicularly near the Ford dealership, I managed to catch a curbstone with this very skirt despite the fact that Focus, Mondeo and Fiesta cars stood quite calmly in neighboring parking spaces and the curb to them did not interfere at all. Many owners preferred to simply cut off this extra, from their point of view, detail, but during the restyling of 2015, the shape of the front bumper was changed and the severity of the problem decreased somewhat. Nevertheless, I have repeatedly observed, for example, during the rally along the Kola Peninsula, how powerful explorers helplessly splayed where the small EcoSport slipped without the slightest difficulty at all. Love number three, expenses and expenses. The economics of owning a Ford Explorer is almost universally acclaimed. Firstly, many owners note fuel efficiency that pleasantly surprised them. Even for pre-styling options, 294 horsepower, the consumption turns out to be quite acceptable. The city of Moscow, half plugs, I have 16.5. The highway mode, here things are like this. The speed is 145 to 150 kilometers slash H. The consumption is 13 to 13.5 L slash 100 kilometers. The speed is 110 to 120. The result is minus 11.5 to 12 liters. For the sake of the experiment, a couple of times in the quiet driving by the rules mode at a speed of 70 to 90, I showed a result of 10.2 at a distance of about 100 kilometers. After deforcing the engine to 249 horsepower, Explorer has become even more economical. Most owners agree that the average consumption is about 11.6 to 11.8 L slash 100 kilometers. Explorer 5, taking into account the mass and horses, is rather modest in appetite. On the highway can be 8 liters or less. Minimum at 60 kilometers slash H and neatly signing coasting about 6.5 to 6.8 L slash 100 kilometers, maximum in the region of 22 liters, and a traffic jam at a speed of 8 kilometers slash H. Real operating consumption in my operating mode is about 12 liters, very economical engine. In the city, with intensive driving, more than 16 liters per hundred did not go away. The route, if you keep 180 kilometers slash H, the consumption is about 14 liters. If 100 to 120 kilometers slash H, no more than 10 L slash 100 kilometers. Of course, someone writes that in the city researcher can eat 20 liters per hundred and even more, about 25. But there are few of them. My consumption is 10 L slash 100 kilometers, highway in Europe, 11 in our city, 13 to 15. For a classic aspirator, great. Whoever has more consumption either stands in fierce traffic jams, or, excuse me, he doesn't know how to pedal. Even in the sport version with a 345 horsepower turbo engine, the consumption does not go beyond the bounds of decency. In the city, in the country, the consumption is the same, August 14th, 15 liters per 100 kilometers. As for me, he eats a lot of gasoline. This is unusual and expensive for me compared to previous cars, although familiar SUV owners say that these are still flowers. Indeed, how can a consumption of 14L slash 100 kilometers be surprising for the owner of the same Neva? Well, the excess appetite of the Neva is explained by insufficient power supply, which forces the engine to constantly turn, but many heavy SUVs of similar weight, dimensions, and dynamics consume 20 to 40 percent more gasoline than the Ford Explorer Sport. Before restyling in 2015, the annual transport tax caused some dissatisfaction. Indeed, the power is under 300 horses, if you please, annually lay out 45 to 50,000 rubles from your pocket. But when the power was reduced to 249 horsepower, then the tax was reduced to quite affordable 18,000 rubles. 
but the cost of casco for this model has always been low since it was completely uninteresting for car thieves there are pluses and relatively low prestige Back in the spring of this year, when insuring a new car at a price of about 3 million rubles, the cost of insurance against damage was from 70,000, with a franchise of 20,000 rubles, to 120,000, without a franchise, that is, less than 5% of the cost. For fans of eternal unbreakable values, I didn't even consider options like Prado or Highlander. Both outperformed the Explorer in quality, comparable in comfort, comparable even in terms of money. But for me, all their advantages are crossed out by theft. Insurance for them is many times more expensive, probably, even the rapid loss of the value of the Explorer does not compensate for these costs. Indeed, Casco on a Land Cruiser 200 costs about 165,000 rubles. Finally, Ford has the lowest cost of original spare parts, consumables, and accessories among brands of the same level. Hate number two, small tank and other design oddities. Yes, the Ford Explorer rides quite decently, but we'll talk about that later. It's a pity that you won't be able to go far as the volume of its gas tank is 68 liters, which is clearly not enough. The owners of Explorer Sport especially feel this insufficiency, but the owners of other versions, regardless of whether 245 or 394 horses are hiding under their hood, express complete confidence that a tank with a volume of at least 80, and preferably 100 liters, would be much more suitable for such a car. Moreover, the dimensions of the car would quite allow it. And so the fuel autonomy is about 450 to 500 kilometers in the city or 600 to 650 kilometers on the highway, which, in fact, is really small. But this is not the only design feature of the car that causes displeasure and bewilderment. For example, why are there no gas struts for lifting the hood in a car for 3 million rubles with a solid tail? Or why is it equipped with a mechanical foot-operated parking brake, which women drivers hate because it's so hard to apply? And this despite the fact that cheaper Ford models have equipment with its electronic counterpart. Why was the car cheated by not installing Ford's branded windshield heating system? Why is there no tailgate? Yes, the trunk windows are tinted, but, nevertheless, the curtain is a very useful thing. Why is there no front parking sensors on the Limited? It seems that everything is really visible, and the dimensions are clear, but the designers very skillfully hid the real dimensions of the car, and this is more than 5 meters in length and 2 meters in width, and these sensors are in the cheaper XLT configuration. Why does a car sound like a horn if you get out of it with a key and close the door? And it turns off only by flashing the brain. Why is it impossible to forcibly turn off the lights in the cabin? He, of course, will go out on his own, but after some time. Why, in some trim levels, the car is not equipped with mudguards, because due to their absence, the lower part of the doors gets very dirty? Why, during restyling, in addition to really useful improvements, did the designers leave the tailgate closing handle on only one side, on the right? Sometimes this is very inconvenient, for example, when the car is parked in a parking lot or garage. Why is the gas tank cap locked with a key, and every time you visit the gas station, the owner has to run to the gas station to open the hatch? The list of questions and claims of this kind is quite long. Love number two, comfort and saturation with technological options. Most of the reviewers evaluate all of the listed shortcomings as annoying little things that cannot spoil the impression of exceptional comfort in the Ford Explorer cabin and the car's highest saturation with a variety of technological options. Let's start with the ergonomics of the driver's seat. My height is 187 centimeters, weight is 120 kilograms, and it's comfortable for me to sit. I drove 1,000 kilometers in a day. I didn't get tired. We inserted the keys the seat drives up to the steering wheel, pulled it out, it drives off. In a word, the exit assistant is a very convenient thing. There are three programmed options for setting the driver's seat, and you can, for example, adjust one position for the city, higher, and the other for the highway, a little more laid back. There are, of course, some comments. 
It seems to someone that the steering wheel is too shifted to the right, which makes it not very convenient to drive the car with your elbow on the armrest. Someone complains about the not very successful implementation of the media system with very small buttons on the touch screen, because of which you always press on the wrong button that I wanted. The touch screen and buttons are a failure. On the move, it is very difficult to get to the right place without looking. But there are many more reviews with enthusiastic ratings. The interior decoration is beyond praise. Relatives were unanimous in their assessments. A starship. Particularly impressive were the seven options for interior lighting. The quality of the interior trim is top-notch. Leather, plastic, wood, chrome, you need to see it once or better. Touch it. Two hatches, one real opening, the other large, panoramic, to see the sky several climate controls and plus air conditioning for the rear comrades and even the most fastidious people rate the quality of interior materials as a solid four if we take the mercedes s last interior as five points at the same time there is no kitchen in the cabin like a lot of wood like plastic everything fits well nothing rattles or creaks anywhere everything is comfortable and ergonomic and all sorts of pockets are quite enough Unless someone complains that the cup holders for the front row of seats have a somewhat strange size, a liter bottle does not fit into them, and a half liter one dangles, they say, they would have done it under a liter one. Yes, the car does not pull on the lux for interior decoration. Very soundly, but nothing more. But the suite must be taken in a set with a corresponding overpayment for the nameplate, and this is a completely different price. The owners were very positive about the auto run function, I liked it very much. From the fifth floor it reaches the car parked 100 meters from the entrance, adaptive cruise control, I really use it, it's very convenient, blind spot monitoring system, I got so used to it that, sitting behind the wheel of another car, I caught myself on the fact that when the signaling device is silent, I start to go in that direction even without a turn signal. But the owners, as a rule, rarely use the car park and voice control. If you don't know how to park yourself, it's better not to buy a 5 meter shaft. There were a couple of times when I played with this thing and pressed the stop in time I almost seated the neighbors in the yard. In general, this is pure pampering. It parks securely only where the blind can park. As for voice control, you can come across the opinion that you just need to force yourself to master this business once, then you won't tear it off, because voice command is cool and convenient. A lot of people mention the concern for the owners of various gadgets, in the cabin of the latest Explorer versions there are as many as three USB connectors, and one of them, under the central mirror, was made specifically for Russia, where the use of DVRs is popular, plus a standard inverter with a 220 volt outlet. And the owners almost unanimously praise the sound insulation. It's quiet in the car. You can hardly hear the trucks passing close. The noise is excellent. Abroad on the autobahns, it's generally quiet even at 160. In short, this is a solid car created for the American market. So even in the basic configuration, it has so many options that are not found in the premium versions of other SUVs. Hate number one, reliability. For 120,000 mileage, my car has changed three transfer boxes. The master told me secretly that she had a resource of 50 to 70,000 kilometers. And this is still a very optimistic assessment. There are enough people on the forums who have encountered this breakdown with a run of about 25 to 30,000 kilometers. The transfer case flies especially often in pre-styling cars, so experienced owners recommend changing the oil in this unit at least every 30,000 kilometers. The second problem Node mentioned in almost every review is the steering rack, the resource of which rarely exceeds 100,000 kilometers. Ford developers placed it very low and did not pay due attention to its ceiling. As a result, after a single, drive through a puddle or overcoming a shallow ford, moisture gets into the mechanism, and after a couple of weeks it starts to make extraneous sounds, which once again confirms that this car is not suitable for serious off-road. Some workshops undertake restoration, and it costs about 20,000 rubles, but there are not enough restored rails for a long time. The replacement is made entirely with an electric booster motor, and the officials cost 185,000 rubles. 
In online stores, the price of a part is about 120 to 140,000 rubles, on eBay 80 to 100,000 rubles. But you have to wait one to two months. Sometimes the steering rack motor fails first, also not sold separately. There were cases when he died 30 kilometers after leaving the dealership. Finally, the rear suspension stabilizer struts regularly fail. They are inexpensive, but they do not last long. And the Explorer is quite capable of tormenting its owner with glitches of electronic systems, and the delight of the fact that your car is a gadget on wheels will immediately turn into a terrible irritation. Then the monitoring system will begin to report low pressure in one of the wheels, despite the fact that checking with a good old pressure gauge shows that everything is fine, then the SYNC system will freeze, then there will be a problem with the remote opening of the doors, and you will have to go to the service to flash the key, then the rear view camera dies, then due to the failure of the variable valve timing control unit, some hellish knock will begin after a cold start, and the cost of Treatment in this case will be 20,000 rubles for the unit itself, plus at least the same amount for work, then the seat servo drive will fail. So the owners write in the reviews, I have never owned a more fragile car, not a single car, with the exception of the VAZ, has broken so much, I agree with other reviews, unreliable car. Surprised by the people who take it new in these difficult times. One of the owners in his review describes how he was going to buy a Land Rover Discovery and even paid a deposit for it, but then he changed his mind, fearing insufficient reliability. I thought that with my specifics of driving around cities and villages, I would not want to go anywhere some winter to stand out of the blue because of some glitches in the management. With Explorer, everything turned out exactly the way I did not want with Discovery. Perhaps the greatest danger is the possibility of destruction of the front levers at speed. I was driving with children along the highway, and at a speed of 130 km slash h the right front suspension arm burst and fell apart. This is no longer a joke. The front wheel broke, and I miraculously kept the car on the track, 30 years of driving experience affected. It is good that by chance there were no passing cars in the middle and right extreme row. You can imagine how I was twisted, and how it could end. It was stories like these that led to the mass curtain call, which included 14,576 crossovers sold between August 2012 and April 2018. So, when buying a car in the secondary market, you should ask if the former owner visited the service to replace the levers. Love number one, behavior on the road. But even the reviewers with long mournful lists of breakdowns they had to deal with pay tribute to the ride comfort, excellent dynamics, and excellent behavior of the Ford Explorer on the road. Very fast car. Kick down on it is a pleasure. Probably, it happens more smartly, but for completely different money. You can ride nine people without problems, it does not affect the dynamics in any way. Driving on the highway is a pleasure, but it's also very good on primers with potholes, the ride is very soft, comfortable, the car is absolutely non-rolling in corners, it holds the road very clearly under any road conditions. Country Country Road passes on excellent. The suspension does not pierce or sway, I did not notice the roll, which is usually blamed on large American SUVs. Stability on the road is decent, rutting is also not a headache. Indeed, the suspension does not break through, but confidently swallows all the usual bumps and flaws in the road surface. It goes smoothly on the leaky primer, and the faster, the softer, the primer with a comb is given effortlessly, without straining the body, and at a good speed. Such frills on other cars would be fraught with a rash of the spine and shorts. But the Explorer performs best on long hauls on highways, the car steers and feels almost like prestige brand sedans at all speeds. In a word, a real liner, a devourer of long distance routes, a wonderful car for traveling and a large family. A cruiser is on the road. Long trips to the south with cruise control are just super, comma in general, the king of the road, you go and have fun. Even at a speed of 140 km slash h it is easy to accelerate. However, one feature should be taken into account on the track, 
if you drive monotonously for 20 to 30 minutes and then try to portray a kick down, then the entire herd under the hood, thanks to the adaptive box, will continue to sleepily chew grass and will not actively support you in the intention to overtake the truck ahead. In a city with a ragged driving mode, this trouble does not exist. Indeed, Explorer needs to be spurred on periodically. And the owners also note that in the conditions of the city the car has a very decent maneuverability and an unexpectedly small turning radius for such dimensions. It is equal to only 10.4 M. This is one of the best indicators in the group of 5 meter cars. In a word, continuous driving pleasure that has not disappeared even after the fifth year of use, especially on long journeys.